stay on your path of your vision and your dreams. Never let someone never pull you away from your vision. And if you want to be anything in life, be the best thing that you be at it. The three major principles is trust, honesty, and integrity. I would explain it straightforward and honest. I won't play with it when it comes down to the people. Tell you anything wrong from what you stand for. If you have a vision and you have a dream about what you like to do in life, don't let no one tell you from it. When you are patient, things will come through properly. I'm your host, Gaurav Garg, and we welcome all our viewers to our show, Amazing Mentor. Today with us is His Royal Majesty King Mahmoud Jamal Al Saris of Numi is an ancestry bloodline royal family of King Koli Tingwala Ba Mandifula, American businessman, philanthropist, professional artist, and investor. Founder, chairman, and CEO of investment firm Numi Kingdom Wealth Solution Inc. CEO of Global Pro One Trust Corp. Partners with TBLD Development Corp. The office of His Majesty Privacy Council. The Republic of Numi is a non-state sovereign identity, formerly situated in the region of North Central South America and adjoining islands. Currently, the Republic of Numi is the government of in Excel but with full legal sovereign status as established by his declaration of sovereignty. It's a pleasure to welcome His Royal Majesty King Mabid Jamil Al Sari to our show, Amazing Mentor. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So tell us about your childhood and any particular childhood memory that you would like to share on our show. Well, I had a very good childhood. As a child, I, I was very playful. I enjoyed experimenting on certain things. Most favorite childhood memories was actually getting my first scientific kit. I actually got a chance to look through the microplane glasses, looking at small little creatures and water creatures. And it just uh, gave me inspiration to try to be a scientist one day, just by that gift that I've received as a young child. So what about your educational background in schooling and higher education? I did my studies at the University of South Florida in South Tampa, Florida, where I studied business and also fine arts. One of the things I have to mention, I, as a child, I was very, very gifted in arts, could draw, sculpture. So I studied fine arts at the university. So how was you in school? Were you a naughty child or a silent child? I was an average child. As my parents would tell me that I just, I used to smile a lot. So as a child, what was your dream profession? My dream profession as a child was to be a professor. I studied the earth and studied different creatures. But eventually, as I got older, it pulled me away from my dreams to just focus in humanitarian situations dealing globally. So what about your hobbies and interests? One of my major hobbies is art. I love art. Getting the chance to work work with my hands, focusing on building sculptures and paintings. I actually was on tour back in 2005 on some of my sculptures in the U.S. A lot of my art went through the international airports on tour. I had different private art shows. Actually, some of my sculptures was in certain piano concerts where pianists from different groups around the world have my sculpture next to their piano. So I'm pretty good, I believe so. So as you are from a royal family, what was that particular thing you missed about your childhood? I missed my grandparents. My my grandfather, both of my grandfathers on both sides of the family were very professional people. They was both of them was architects and they're professionals. A the lot of stuff that I learned from my grandparents was stay on your path of your vision and your dreams. Never let someone never pull you away from your vision. And if you want to be anything in life, be the best thing that you be at it. A lot of stuff I learned from them about being a man. Even though my father and my mother was there in my part of my life, but the most of this stuff, my grandparents actually sat down with me and gave me the guidance that I need and um, treasure that to this day. So where did you start your journey from as a professional journey? When I just came out of school, I was actually was hired in as an executive for a company called Sheena Shine. They were one of the Fortune 500 companies that ethnic owned. Got an opportunity to pull up five different contracts. Each contract worked about between 1.4 to 3.5 million contracts. And I was very successful in the contracts. Inspired me to start my own business, start my own business, Genia. And from there, it just, the sky was the limit in entrepreneurship. 
there any particular movement you would like to share from your journey as a kid? Most of the movements that I involved in gender-based violence against women and children. I'm very passionate about that because as a child, sometimes violence comes towards children and women. And I've seen a lot of that goes on globally. And that's one of my major passions to protect the children and women that violence against them. So how has been your journey from assistant to vice president operation to chief executive officer Numi Kingdom Global Enterprises Corporation? I have to smile on that. Whoever put that information together was, was incorrect. I actually established the company. I'm actually the owner and operator of Numi Kingdom Global Enterprises. And, and from there, it's other companies that branch off as agglomerates with the Global 4-1 uh, Trust Corporation and also New Morrison and National Group of Science and Development. So what's that one thing you love about your journey the most? Right now, what I love is about meeting and solving problems globally. Meeting people who have the same interests that I have on saving our planet. This is our home. Scientists might talk about venturing out, trying to find new planets and stuff like that. No, that's okay. But the first thing is, why you want to find a new planet and you can't solve the problems here? You will take the same problems to that same planet and cause more havoc on that planet that you left the problems here. So I feel that we need to focus on saving this planet. And then once we save this planet, then we can go out and venture and make more safe havens for people who want to go out and look for new life, new civilizations. So what do you want to say about the upcoming event of Numi Kingdom? We have two major events that's going on. We have actually establishing an agreement right now with a summit event with all the kings and queens of Africa and globally that is welcome to the summit. And it's a business development summit. It's one of the great events that will take place. It's a historic event. And also we have a, a business expo that will be start establishing in 2023 in Atlanta, Georgia, where you know Atlanta is one of the major hubs of business development and banking and globally. So them two major events is very important that we need to reach out and get that information out to clients. So tell us about Numi Kingdom history and your future plan for Numi Kingdom. Fuller people is from actually migrated out of North Africa, dealing with all the different wars that took place, First Pugent Wars and also the Second Pugent Wars. The kingdom itself, Numi Kingdom, was established in 202 BC and was conquered by Constantine and was reestablished as a military state and turned everyone into military citizens to fight for Rome. A lot of the people have migrated out of that situation in South and Central and um, South Africa and West Africa. The kingdom itself was reestablished under my authority, was given to me by my ancestors and also by the people, a full of people to establish, reestablish Numidia, Numa. And it's been reestablished since 2000. It's a great honor to carry the responsibility to get Numidia. Right now, as you may know by the geographical situation of the globe, Numidia re, was renamed as the Algeria and Mediterranean. I have to respect the decision different global by the UN, but at the same time, the sovereign capacity of Numidia still stands today. What are your future plans for Numidia? We have a very strong plan with our investors and also with our ministers. We have a, a ministry of 10 ministries with our body politics, focused in establishing green safe haven, green city safe haven for the kingdom itself. At the same time, establishing business relationship globally, which we are establishing that as we speak. And the future will stand for another thousand years. So you launched Numi Culture and Art Authority in March 2015. What's this authority all about? The art and culture community was established by my authority was given to a close friend of mine, Teddy Riley, who's a music producer. And just recently, I brought in a new person. Her name is Van Miller, who will actually take the torch uh, and assist Mr. Riley on the art and culture community based on getting the information out because you have to understand this world is based on art and culture. And so that's why it's very important to establish that. And for have Teddy Riley, who's a very famous music producer, and well-known artists, I feel that was necessary to ask them to come along and assist Lumi Kingdom in this adventure. So who is your mentor in life? My mentor is the creator. And my close guidance and my pillow 
is my queen. And without her, I might have to sometimes frustration dealing with the kingdom or dealing with business, but she always bring peace to the matter and always, always guide me to the creator to bring peace in any type of situation. So what all major steps have you been taking till day to enhance Numidia's position on global map? Major ideals based on economic development, also our environment ministry, especially the oceans, doing some of the studies through our Ministry of Environmental. A lot of the lands are toxic, dealing with a lot of the waste dumps that have been going on through different countries and corporations. And that's when our main focus is establishing a relationship with Sierra Leone because they have a major problem in waste and waste management. And we also bring them programs that we have for New Kingdom to assist in Sierra Leone with the cleanup in certain parts of West Africa. So what are the major challenges you face while implementing any new idea and how do you make sure it is accepted in large? We have a lot of people who claim to be legitimate corporations. And a lot of times we find out that they are being scam front companies. And we're trying to work through all the problems that dealing with these scam companies to make sure that it's protecting the kingdom from getting defrauded. And that's one of our, our main focus on trying to find the right people to work with on dealing with these type of projects. So what does leadership means to you? The three major principles is trust, honesty, and integrity. There is the main focuses that I, I live by. And as a leader, you have to be honest. You have to be very transparent. These are things that I stand on, the three major principles. Great. So what are the important export opportunity you see between Numi Kingdom and India? Most of the people, I won't say most, but a large majority of people that work with this kingdom are India. And the relationships that we have with India is very beautiful. We have a consul general out of India and also the high priest of India is also a part of New Kingdom. So the international business trade uh, is still in the works. Uh, right now, we are in discussion to actually establish an uh, embassy or consul general office there in, in India. It's actually been worked through the Ministry of Justice that's head through uh, Dr. Gopi Krishna. So uh, it's a lot of interest there in India. And, you know, one thing that I do not shun away from bringing, do have an open door policy dealing with different nationality to work against racism. So what are various civilization and cultures in Numi Kingdom? We have many cultures and nationalities that work in Numi Kingdom. I can't name them all. We have everyone from, from the Philippines to India. It doesn't matter what race or nationality to work for Numi Kingdom, even though that is an African kingdom. To me, it's all about getting the job done. So how do you make work and life balance? My life and balance with my personal life. It's kind of hard because it's my phones or my business is kind of globally. So it's almost 24 hours. I try to spend a lot of time with the queen between me and her and my children. It works itself out. Or maybe I have three different phones or these three different phones constantly ringing and I have staff that answer a lot of these calls. But I, I do show balance towards my responsibilities towards the family and also towards the kingdom and also towards the business structure. It balances itself out accordingly. So when you were crowned king of Numi Kingdom, how was the feeling and experience? <laughs> you had to go there. <laughs> I was very nervous. The whole time doing the ritual of the coronation, I used to call off God because I didn't know what was going on. And when the high priest had told me that the people wanted me to carry the crown, I had to go through almost a 30 day ritual through the shaman. And, you know, when I was talking to my wife about it, I uh, will totally call off God. To the, even to this day, I'm still grasped the responsibility of wearing this crown because it's great. And it's heavy. People say that who will wear the crown bear the burden, and it's true. And uh, it's not about a uh, nobility. It's not about how you want to be a celebrity, because as you may know, certain royalties globally they treat them as celebrity. But wearing this crown, oh man, it's it's not easy. It's not easy. I don't want to be in front of no camera taking pictures all the time, because it's not about being how you want to say special or a celebrity in the, in the spotlights. It's a great responsibility towards the people. And that's what the people want someone to be honest about how you look about my future. And it's about that. It's not about being caught up in the hype.
so how would you explain the saying with great power comes the great responsibilities i would explain it straightforward and honest i won't play with it when it come down to the people like i said the three principles being honest and being truthful don't lead the people astray you can't play with this when you're dealing with other leaders you can't play with it when you're dealing with the people so it's a great responsibility so according to you how important does education plays in numi kingdom it's very important that's one of our major topics and one of our major programs in our ministry of education uh dealing with the future and dealing with the present time it's not the wrong talking about the past but if you're going to talk about the past be honest about the past because a lot of people like to write their history and make they self bigger in history but it's not about the past it's about present future and situations dealing with the economy dealing with what's going on globally and and we have to focus on that with them with education so how would you define politics politics to me is someone agenda that's to me politics when someone have an agenda that's their politics and no me it's not about politics cuz we're a theocratic kingdom politics is to me is someone personal agenda and what they're trying to get done for their own purpose and this kingdom even though i have a vision but the vision is what the people want that's my politics if you want to be be straight for the honors so how would you describe the society you and your future generation would love to live in i would like to see a peaceful planet and that's that's hard to say because like you say politics dealing with the, the situation with the superpowers between russia and the united states i don't want to talk about one who's wrong or one is other but if these superpowers come together with China, United States and America, I believe that some of these problems that we have globally dealing with world hunger, dealing with famines, dealing with homeless, I believe the money that these countries make to solve a lot of the issues that we have, someone have to stand up and say enough is enough. But since we have these type of men in power or women in power, we're not going to have these solve these problems because they have their own politics agendas. So what are your major roles and responsibility as king of Numi Kingdom? My responsibilities in Numi Kingdom is to delegate and make sure that the ministers and the ministries follow the vision of the people. Overseeing certain projects, making sure that my advisors give me the right information so I can make the right decisions. I have a proxy council that's made up with 10 advisory board members and each person have a role on how the function of the kingdom and how our business is handled properly. Uh it's not come down to one decision because it's voted upon with the or council making sure that any decisions that I make is handled properly and it won't be thwarted. So if anybody want to take citizenship of Numi Kingdom, how can he apply? We do have a official website, have a portal where a person would like to be a citizen of Numi Kingdom. They could go to the portal and pull the application and it view through our MMI. That's our military uh, intelligence program that do the tense background check and make sure that we are not bringing anyone that will bring embarrassment or harm to any other country or any other sovereign state. So it's not hard process. but it is we do acquire a background check and make sure they fit the requirements that are given through our constitution. So what advice would you like to give to young generation? It's important that they understand where they stand as a young person and never have someone pull them away from their vision or their dream. If you have a vision, stay the course. Don't let no bully, don't let your mother or your father or anyone tell you anything wrong from what you stand for if you have a vision and you have a dream about what you like to do in life don't let no one tell you from it now if you're dealing in anything dangerous and they give you the best advice look at it and wear it because it's based on saving your life and also saving your vision and your purpose where you stand for i would tell any young person to pursue their vision and don't let no one pull them away from it not I don't care who they are so what all are do's and don't you suggest for your citizens the do's is be honest be faithful follow your dreams love love don't hate the don't says don't abuse life don't abuse natural life don't abuse your body 
stay in your spiritual realm. Focus on the right foods. Because if you eat the right foods, your body will be stronger and you think clearly. Be obedient to your parents. Be obedient to your elders. If anyone telling you wrong, you have an opportunity to question their judgment on why they're telling you that. Stand your grounds on your vision and your dreams. That's how I believe. So what advice would you like to give to your dignitaries in your kingdom? Follow what I say today. <laughs> uh, I'm going to be more, be more honest. Be patient on any type of projects. Because when you're dealing with investors, when you're dealing with any type of investors, even banks, you have to be patient because a lot of times they have to go through their due diligence. When you are patient, things will come through properly. So now we will start a rapid round. We could go ahead and get started. Your favorite actor and actress? James Bond. <laughs> and my favorite actress, I would say Halle Berry. Your favorite color? My favorite color is blue and gray. Your favorite Thank destination? You. My favorite destination would be Florida, uh, Dubai, and the UK, and Africa. So how would you define success in one line? Success is what you do day by day. To me, success is if I could wake up in the morning and tell my wife that I love her, that's my success. Things in your wish list? Just to see my grandparents again. I, I miss my grandparents. So what change would you like to see in the world around? It's a lot of things that I'd like to see change on this planet. Mostly the problems that I see that people dealing with they're dealing with, I wouldn't say, they're dealing with mental, a lot of mental issues. People is in the now of mental illness because of the state of the situation that this, this planet is in. We just came out of a pandemic. Price of food has skyrocketed. The price of fuel has, in certain parts of the globe has skyrocketed. And people are dealing with stress in their marriages. We did a, the kingdom did a study. Even in our kingdom, we have divorce, separation. We even have people who have died from the COVID in our kingdom. So we're dealing with a lot of mental illness. Not saying that people are sick mentally. We just we're dealing with mental illness or stress, and that could break down. That could break down a society, any type of society. So that's why I like to see what type of changes that could be made. Uh, in, even in the health community, dealing with uh, mental stress. So at last, one line that defines you. A happy person, a very optimistic person. So thank you very much for your time and it was a pleasure doing conversation with you. And it's my pleasure that you are on my show. Thank you, sir. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thanks for watching Amazing Mentor. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button to get regular updates. Thank you very much.